So we have a quick video here on graphing square and cubed roots. So to graph square and cubed roots, I want to take you back for a little review on absolute value. You probably remember absolute value graphs have the form a times the absolute value of x minus h plus k, where a normal, just straight absolute value of x looks like a v. But when we performed an x minus 2, and then a minus 3 on the outside and a negative 2 in front, a few things happened. Well, that would mean our vertex went to a positive 2, negative 3. So remember, you move to the right 2 because it's opposite of what you think. Down 3, so our vertex was 2 comma negative 3. The negative flipped it, so instead of it opening up, it opened down. And the 2 made it stretch a lot faster. So that's old absolute value graphs. Well, here's the square root of x graph. That's what the square root of x looks like. We know square roots are not negative, so that's why it's only on top. So if we were to predict what was going to happen with 2 times the square root of x minus 2 plus 3, if you think just like the problem before, we're going to switch this up. So we're going to go right 2, up 3, and that will be our starting point. And now it's just going to be stretched upward much faster. It's the same principle. All you have to do is use the same type of thing that we did back with absolute value. So it's opposite of what's inside the radical, comma, outside. That's going to be your starting point. And now the 2 is just going to stretch it up and make it go up faster. Cube roots. Cube roots typically look like this. The reason they go negative uh, for the x and y is because you are allowed to take the cube roots of negative numbers. So this next example, we're just going to predict what's going to happen. So we have a cube root of x plus 4 and then minus 2. So we can predict that our vertex, or starting point, shall we say, is at negative 4, negative 2. And now this negative sign is going to flip it vertically, and the 1 half is going to squish it. So if we were just sketching this, it would look a little bit like that. Now, of course, you can use your graphing calculator to give you the exact graph, but the purpose of this set of notes is just to help you predict what is happening with these graphs. Okay? So, again, we have y equals x squared. This is something that we've worked with before. A typical x squared is just that, a parabola. So what would the graph look like if we were going to put an x plus 3 inside what's being squared, a minus 2, and then make it negative and scale it by one third. It's going to squish it, flip it upside down, move it to the left 3 and down 2. So we start left 3 down 2. It's going to open upside down and we're going to squish it. So when you squish it, the parabola is going to get much wider. That's it. That's all we're doing here is using what we know about graphs to predict what these graphs are going to look like. So all we're going to do here is graph and determine the domain and range. So number four, we have a square root that starts at 2, 1. It's going to be flipped upside down, and it's going to be multiplied by 3. So since the first one is just going to be jumping way down with a multiplier of 3, our graph is going to look like that. Now for our domain and range, you must look at these graphically. So... Our domain. Domain is x. What values do we have for x? We only have x values of 2 and greater. So x has to be greater than or equal to 2. Our range is where we look at y. Here's our starting. So where's the graph going? Up or down? It's going down. 
So it's only y is less than or equal to 1 because our starting point is at 2 comma 1. So since this is going to the right, it's going to be greater than equal to 2, and it's going down, it's less than or equal to 1. Now domain and, and range is very easy for cube root graphs. So graphing it, we see we're going to start at negative 2, negative 1. So we're going to go left 2 and down 1. And it's positive, but it's scaled by 2. So it's going to go up and down quicker. So our graph is going to look a little something like this. And notice I'm just sketching it. I'm just checking to see if you have a good understanding of what's going on here. The domain and range is easy for cube roots because you can take a cube root of a positive, negative, and zero. So the domain and range is going to be um, x and y can both equal all real numbers. And that's always going to work for cube roots. Okay, this is Longo and I'm out. See you, bye.